In my late 20s, I thought I had it made. In just four years, I had taken $10,000 of my own money and turned it into over $6 million in real estate. And I was on track to retire by the time I was 31. I had a gorgeous home with a water view, a 780 credit score. Oh yeah. And a whole lot to learn because then the real estate market crashed and everything changed. My credit was ruined and I lost my beautiful home to foreclosure. I wasn't able to pay my bills and eventually even my electricity got turned off and I couldn't afford to get it turned back on. As I scrambled to find a place to move, I actually lived in fear that I would come home to find the locks changed and my pets trapped inside. Ultimately, I ended up being forced to declare bankruptcy. I felt like a failure. By the way, hi, I'm Penelope Jane Smith and I'm recording this video to help you avoid some of the terrible and painful and costly mistakes that I've made so that you don't have to repeat them. I'll break down the biggest mistakes I made that led to me losing my $6 million real estate empire, what I learned, what I would do differently if I knew then what I know now. You can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. And this is gonna save you time, money, stress, pain, and heartache, and help you be successful when it comes to money and investing especially real estate investing. If you find this video helpful, please tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm so that YouTube will show this video to more people and help grow my channel. That would really help me out and I appreciate it. Okay, so let's dive in. I'm going to share my top three most costly mistakes when it comes to real estate investing and how to avoid them and how I'm approaching things differently now. My first mistake, may seem obvious to you, and that was not keeping enough cash on hand in case things didn't work out the way I thought. Oh no! There are so many things that can go wrong and that are outside of your control when it comes to real estate investing. And having a big cash cushion can help you weather those storms. Maybe your tenant moves out and it takes you longer than you think to get a new one, so you have no rent coming in but you still have all the expenses like property taxes, utilities, insurance, a mortgage payment if you have a mortgage on the property. All of that has to come out of your pocket. Or maybe your property needs repairs, whether your tenant broke something or it's just normal wear and tear. Maybe you have an HOA or city that sends you a bill for a special assessment, oh boy, for a specific project that they're doing. And then there's all kinds of random weird stuff that you'd never expect. Like one time someone stole the copper pipes out of one of my buildings. Seriously, who does that? When it comes to real estate investing, there's really only one way to deal with unexpected costs and that's to expect them. I'm not trying to be negative here, I'm a pretty positive person. And in this case, I'm positive that unexpected expenses will come up. When it comes to real estate investing, it's not a matter of if something like this will happen, it's only a matter of when. So it's really important to have cash reserves. So if you're going to invest in real estate, I want you to have a separate bank account that's just for keeping a cash cushion on hand to handle this stuff. How much do you need? It depends a lot on the property you have and the area that it's in, since there can be a huge difference in vacancy rates and maintenance costs. A good rule of thumb is six months of expenses. So my first mistake was not having enough cash reserves, but my next mistake was even bigger. And that was over leveraging. What do I mean by over leveraging? Well, one of the things that makes real estate such an amazing investment is being able to use leverage. When you were a kid, did you ever play on a teeter-totter? Or some people call it a seesaw? Depending on where you're sitting, you can lift someone much heavier than you up in the air. You can put in a little bit of effort and get a big result. That's the power of leverage. And you can do this in real estate too. Without leverage, let's say you buy a $100,000 property for $100,000 in cash. And that property goes up 10% in value. So it's now worth 110,000, you with me? So you made 10% on your $100,000 investment. But what if you put that $100,000 as a down payment on a $500,000 property 
and got a mortgage for the other $400,000. If that property goes up 10%, it's now worth $550,000. You made $50,000 on your $100,000 investment. You made more than 10%, you made 50% on your money. Now, that doesn't include rental income or mortgage payment or anything, but it gives you an idea of how you can use leverage in real estate to make a lot more money. But too much leverage can work against you too. In our house example, if your tenant moves out of the $100,000 house, you're not paying a mortgage on it, so it's not as big a deal. But if your tenant moves out of the $500,000 house, you still have to make the payment on that $400,000 mortgage. So what I mean when I say that I was over leveraged is that I borrowed more money than I could afford to make the payments on when things didn't turn out the way I thought. Mm. Some of my properties were actually negative cash flow, meaning that the rental income didn't cover all of the expenses because I was planning to sell them in the short term for a profit. When I couldn't sell them after all because the real estate market tanked and I couldn't afford to cover the negative cash flow on all of them by myself, I ended up defaulting on the loans and getting foreclosed on. If I knew then what I knew now, I'd make sure that I had multiple exit strategies, meaning that if I couldn't sell it like I planned, I could afford to rent it out or at least option it or you know hold on to it until the market recovered. Even with not having enough cash reserves and over leveraging, I still could have saved some of my real estate empire if I hadn't made this third tragic mistake. I didn't know what I didn't know. But if I had known this when I was in the middle of losing everything, I might have been able to keep my house. I definitely would have been able to keep my electricity on. What's mistake number three? Not having a cash flow plan. What's a cash flow plan? A cash flow plan is another term for budget, but many people feel contracted when they hear the word budget. And I feel like cash flow plan is actually the more accurate term because it's not just about spending, it's about creating a plan for the cash that's flowing in. And if you ever find yourself in the situation I was in where you don't have enough money coming in to pay everyone that wants to be paid, it's more important than ever to have a plan. Because when you're in a financial crisis, you are not thinking clearly. When everyone is screaming at you to pay them, it's easy to get scared and overwhelmed and make bad decisions. I so wish I had known this when I was in the middle of losing everything. A collector from Washington Mutual called and made me cry, so I agreed to pay $500 per month on my home equity line, which was stupid because I wasn't paying my first mortgage, so the home was going to foreclosure anyway. Then my electricity got turned off and I didn't have the money to get it turned back on and everything in the fridge went bad. I just paid whoever yelled loudest and I didn't think about how I was gonna take care of my basic human survival needs. If I had had a plan, like I said, I might've been able to keep my house. I definitely would have been able to keep the electricity turned on. And here's what's really crazy. This is so embarrassing. I had properties with positive cash flow. Why did I stop paying the mortgage on those? It didn't make any sense. I was out of my mind. I was in reaction mode. If I knew then what I know now, I would have made a prioritized list of what I'd do with the income I did have as it came in, starting with food, then basic utilities, then shelter, then basic transportation. Because once you have your basic living expenses covered, you can live to fight another day. Then if enough income comes in for one more thing, what will it be? Then one more thing, what will that be? So there you go. Have a cash cushion, use leverage wisely without overdoing it, and follow a cash flow plan. While losing $6 million in real estate was a painful and challenging experience that I wouldn't wish on anyone, I have to say that I've grown a lot as a result, both as an investor and as a person. As Henry Ford said, failure is an opportunity to begin again more intelligently. I've become a better teacher and a better investor and created a really beautiful life on a firm financial foundation. I don't have any consumer debt. I've been able to cash flow my dream wedding, travel the world, buy my dream car, hire amazing people to support me and take an extra long maternity leave to be with my first baby. 
And I don't lose sleep at night over my investments because I'm following a clear strategy without over leveraging. Since you've made it this far, if you found this helpful, please tap the like button for this video if you haven't already done that because it really helps me out. It also helps if you comment on the video. I'm particularly curious about what my story sparks in you and what other topics you'd like to see me make videos on. So please comment below and let me know. And if you'd like to see more videos from me around personal finance, money management, saving and investing, and financial freedom, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon so you'll see when I make a new video. If you wanna connect with me on social media, I'll post the links to my various profiles in the description. Right now, I'm mostly on Facebook, Penelope Jane Smith, and on Clubhouse, at Penelope Jane, and I'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching and happy investing.